How many people believe we're going to have a revival? How many people believe for a move of the Spirit of God? Come on, give me a wave if you believe for a move of the Spirit of God. How many people want to be part of that move? Amen? I want to tell you, I am so excited about what God's about to do in Australia because that's what God does. Amen? He's about to move mightily. I want to tell you, He wants to slap the devil up the side of the head. He wants to kick him that far that he'll take a week to find his way back. Amen? Because I believe that we are in for a move of the Spirit of God that is just going to eclipse anything that we've ever, ever seen. It's called revival. And I just want to just share a few things and a few thoughts that I've been uh, contemplating over the last week or two, or actually the last 50 years, to be honest with you. We've been in a few revivals. We've got Lynn here that got born again in 1981 at the uh, Pineapple Shed. And we had a revival. I said to her this morning, and when she came in, I said, you know about revival, don't you? She said, oh, yes, I sure do. Because we saw a move of the Spirit of God that, that touched people. And that's what Australia needs. It needs a move of the Spirit. Amen? We don't need man's wisdom and man's understanding, but we need a move of the Spirit. So this morning I asked myself a question, what is revival? What is it going to be? What's it going to be like? How is it going to happen? What's, 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 what's the... What's the ingredients of it? So, Father, we just ask you today that by your Spirit, you'd, you'd drop something into us that would, that would ignite something on the inside of us, my God, that would, that would cause even a, a, like a volcano. Lord, uh, these, these great mountains that are laying dormant over the years and it looks like nothing's happening and people go up there and have a hike and they, they build houses underneath and all of a sudden something from within starts to erupt Something from within starts to get poured out, my God. And Lord, I pray that your church would be like that. Lord, that you would just by your spirit ignite something on the inside of your church. And Lord, that would cause it to just come alive and, and Lord, erupt. And Lord, that everybody will know that, that you're alive in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. I asked myself the question, uh, will Jesus just turn up and start demonstrating his power? Is that what he's going to do over Satan? I don't believe he's going to do that. I do not believe that that's what he's going to do because I believe that he's already given us the authority over sickness. He's already given us authority over Satan. Do you believe that? And so, you know, I believe that what's going to happen is there's going to come a fresh revelation, a fresh understanding. And I, and I pray that that you could see yourself as that mountain that is about to erupt. It's about to come alive. It's about to, to bring forth again. Amen? And, and uh, people will know the power. See, God's already given us authority over the works of Satan. It says in uh, Luke 10, 19, it says how God anointed us and has given us power and authority over all the works of Satan, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Do you believe that? He's given us in Philippians 2, 9 and 10, He's given us a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I, and I believe that what we've got to do is we've got to come to an understanding because, you see, many of us are affected by what we see and what we hear and, 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 and the moods and everything. How many people know that the world, the whole world, not just Australia and not just your little world, the enemy has come in like a mighty flood. It's called coronavirus. It's called a lot of things. But there's something there that's come and, and it's caused disruption and it's, called, it's become like a taskmaster over our lives. You can't go here. You can't go there. I got the shock of my life today, to be honest with you. I was standing at the, uh, just at the door there and I, some lady that was at the bookshop or something like that, she went to go to the toilet and she got a phone out and she had to, what do you call it? Check in <laughs> to go to the toilet. Man, I, 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 to, to be totally honest with you, I got a little bit of a chuckle on the inside of me to think that you've got to check in to go to the toilet. 
we're, we're, being, we're being controlled. We're being, you know, it's like you can't do this, you can't do that. You, you, you know, if you're not vaccinated soon, you won't be able to go to a supermarket. You won't be able to go to a shopping center. You won't be able to go and, uh, and, uh, and have a meal in a shop. We're going to be restricted. But you see, this isn't taking God by storm. See, when God spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, he spoke words there, and I'm not too sure it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in the Sunshine Coast and all around the world. I've heard their cry because of the taskmasters, the coronavirus and things, and the restriction that they're putting on us. And he said this, he said, I have come down to deliver my people because I've heard the cry of my people. I listened to Tom tonight today as he's talking about prayer. Friend, I want to tell you, our prayer meetings are not just there so that we can come and have a grumble, but it's something there that you can come out and start to cry out to your God, start to cry out about the oppression, what we're seeing. See, today there are people there that are committing suicide. There are people there that are losing their jobs. There are families that are being divided and separated. There's people that can't even have their, their fellowship with their families at Christmas because they're, they're living in a different area. They're, they're restricted. The borders are shut down. Everything's shut down. But I want to tell you, I believe what God's wanting is wanting to hear again the cry of his people. Father, we come to worship you. We come to call upon your name because we know that you are the answer. We know that you carry the mantle. We know that you carry the anointing. And my God, we're asking you for the anointing to be poured out upon your church again, that we might erupt into your victory, erupt into your purpose, hallelujah, that we might become the church triumphant, the church victorious, and not be ruled by, by state chairman and goodness knows what else that are trying to control us, amen. Sickness and disease is under our feet, you believe it today. Satan is under our feet. Jesus has given us a victory. We can cry out and say, God, will you come? Will you come? I want to hear, tell you today, if you hear the voice of God, he said, I've already come, hallelujah. I've already came and I destroyed the works of Satan. And I've given you the authority now to go out in my name and pull him down and smash the gates of hell and take back what the devil has stolen, amen. Don't sit around pussyfooting around singing lullabies. Let's start to sing a song of war. Take authority over the works of Satan in Jesus' name. As, as he came, he spoke, and he, and he said, I've come down. He said, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you to Pharaoh. You know, one of the interesting things is that we just expect when God says, I'm going to do it, that he's going to do it today. All I don't know when he's going to do it. All I know is he's going to do it. All you have to know is that he's going to do it. Amen. And whatever happens on the sideline, I'm not going to be discouraged by that. But I'm going to keep my eye on the promise. I'm going to keep my eye on the word of God. When he said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. There's going to be a move of my spirit that's going to eclipse anything that you've ever seen before. If you can hang on. You see, when Moses went up to the Pharaoh and he said, God said, let my people go and set them free. It didn't just happen like that. As a matter of fact, it got worse. It got worse. Then the plagues came, but the children of God were still in that. Though it didn't affect them, they were still had to go out and gather the wheat. They had to go out and gather the straw, rather. They still had to make their bricks, and there were frogs all over the place, or there might be lice. There was and all the different things that happen. But all I know is that God said, I'm going to set my people free. And there was a day, and that day, hallelujah, shakabundi, I want to tell you, girl, there's a day coming, hallelujah, when God's going to set us free, amen. And we're going to erupt into his glory. We're going to erupt into his power. And we're going to go lay hands on the sick, and they're going to recover. And they're going to come by the thousands, by the thousands, by the thousands, and Millie, hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, got the break on. <laughs> Jesus is alive, amen, friend. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. Oh, man, he's given us power and authority. 
power is in the call. The power is in the call of God. Every one of us have been called. Do you believe that today? We're all called to go out and do the works of Satan. These things shall follow them that believe in my name. If you're a believer in the name of oh, Russia, Betty, you're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. Johnny, I want to tell you, you're going to not hear a buzz. You're going to hear a roar. Hallelujah. God wants to replace the buzz with a roar. A roar of the line of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Can I hear a roar today? Oh, man. Meow. <laughs> now, come on. Let me hear a roar. Come on, roar. Hallelujah. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. We're going to frighten hell out of the devil. I'm well, we're going to frighten him into hell, actually. <laughs> God is a good God. Amen. Today we're all called and have power and authority over the strongholds. Know that, my friend, know that. See that COVID thing, it's going to break, amen? Why don't we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, smash that thing. Smash it. Raise up your church in Jesus' name. Raise it up. Raise us up, my God. It will not have dominion over us. It will not have control over us. Father, you raised up your church to have dominion. You raised up your church to have power. You raise us up to carry the anointing, the mantle in Jesus' name. See, Jesus has given us victory and has put all things under his feet and our feet as well. Amen. There's some amazing scriptures that I, that I've, I guess I've fashioned and built my whole life on. And, and if you don't have structural and foundational things, the enemy comes in and he will destroy it. He'll pull you down. He'll, he'll get at you. But, but you've got to have an answer to him. Amen. You, you've, got to, you've got to be able to just pull his, call his bluff. Amen. In Ephesians uh, 1 verse 21 it says, Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and over every name that is named, not only in this age but in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet. And he gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness, fullness of him that fills all the earth. Amen. You, he has quickened, he's made alive. Jesus came to this planet as our substitute. He didn't come just because he had nothing else to do. He came with a purpose and with a plan of redemption. Amen. He came as, as a substitute to this planet to take on and defeat Satan on our behalf. I don't have to fight the devil. Jesus came as my substitute. He emptied himself and became like a man. He carried my infirmities. He carried my sickness. He carried my shame. Just like, uh, like uh, Jack was saying today, changed his life forever. Because Jesus did it, amen. Jesus destroyed the works of the enemy. He came in power as my substitute. He came here and defeated the enemy. He smashed him on my behalf, on your behalf. Satan stole our position. He stole our identity as rulers of what God had created us for. In Genesis 1.26, he said that he was going to create man in his own image, in his own likeness. And he was going to give them dominion or authority over what he created. He created a place called earth for you and me to, to dominate, to rule, to control, to enjoy. Beautiful. Look at the Sunshine Coast. Go out there and look at the beautiful oceans and everything that's around the islands. This world is a beautiful place. Man's messed it up, but it's a beautiful place. And he gave it to us. But you see, the enemy came and stole it. Stole my identity. Stole my position as ruler of what God created for us. At the fall of man, Satan became the God, small g, of this earth. Now, oh, praise God. Praise God that Jesus put an end to that. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Jesus put an end to that. He triumphed over him. 
He annihilated him. He, he, he wiped the floor with him. He, he totally disarmed him. Jesus made a show of him openly. He gave mankind back our place or our dominion. You see, if we don't, if we somehow or other just allow all the circumstances of life, and how many people know that there, there are many trials and things that come your way? And, and if you just want to go down Grumble Alley and grumble and moan and complain, woe to me. And I was thinking of Tom when he talked about that little 1.5 volt battery or something like that. And, you know, you. Or you can be like a lion, hallelujah, and begin to roar, hallelujah. Glory to God. Where you been? I haven't seen you for ages, man. No. Oh, God. See, you got to plug into the power source. And, and God doesn't want to hear grumblers and complainers. He wants to hear people there somewhere or other put their trust in him. Somewhere or other start to quote what Jesus says. How do you feel today? I am fearfully and wonderfully made, hallelujah. How are things going today? I am more than a conqueror, hallelujah. That's who I am. If you can't remember that, get some of those things there that Beverly made up and read them, hallelujah. Another thing you can do is try reading your Bible. It's a good book, amen? It's a good book, it's a good book, it's a good book. Jesus made a show of him. Took our place. What God wants us to do now is demonstrate his power. Paul said in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 1 through to 5, he said, when I come to you, I didn't come to you with, with wisdom of man, he said, but I come to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. And demonstration, amen, that your faith wouldn't be in the wisdom of man, but it would be in the power of God. One of the greatest problems we have today is that the church and people are relying on the wisdom of man. And I want to tell you, I've heard some great ideas, but half of them are not worth the paper they're written on. Wisdom today. I was told once, if you want to build a church, Neil, don't speak in tongues. You want to build a big church, Neil? Don't, don't, don't talk about the blood of Jesus. People don't want to hear about the suffering. Oh, and one thing they don't really want to hear about is their responsibility. Don't tell me I'm responsible. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, so am I. So are you. There's certain things that, that we're responsible in. Tom was trying to talk about tithing. Oh, don't talk about tithing. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Don't tell them. Don't. Tell them how wonderful they are. Tell them how beautiful. You look so beautiful this morning. You are smart. And everybody happy. God wants us to build in the Spirit. Wants us to be Spirit people. Wants us to be responsible to what God requires of us. And, and you know, Jesus took our place and died a horrible death to set me free. So now in reality, we take Jesus' place of authority on planet Earth. We use His name over all the works of Satan. We are to demonstrate the victory. Jesus said in, in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 5, that, you know, what did he say? Let me have a look. That your faith, oh, I've already said that one. Yeah, oh, thank you. I'm just still getting a little bit ahead of myself here. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, amen? Is it all right to get excited? See, people... Work with the wisdom of man and not the power of God. How many people know that if you want the job done, you get the power of God? Amen? The power of God. Mankind, although ignorantly, I hope, think that their ways are better than God's ways. I'm talking about the blood. See, we all have a part to play in this revival. 
Ephesians uh, 1, and uh, let's just read this little bit from verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance of the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right seated him in heavenly places, far above principality and power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but that which is to come and put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is body, the fullness of him that fills all and all. You see, Jesus is the head of the body. We are the body. The body is the church. Jesus is the head. You are the body. The body is the church. Friend, we are not a headless chook. We are not a headless chook. We're not people down here. Look, where do I go? I know in the old days, we didn't have uh, Red Rooster. We didn't have uh, Kentucky Fry. We didn't have all those rotisserie chickens that they have. We had a chopping block with an axe. <laughs> and you'd go out and grab the poor chicken. Oh, I'm sorry that I have to talk about this. But you'd grab the chicken and you'd chop his head off and you'd let him go and he'd run around. The... Anybody ever seen a chook? Now, come on, am I telling the truth? That's got no head, it's still running. That's not the church, amen? We have got a head. His name is Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. I have got a head. His name is Jesus, son of grief no more. He can heal the brokenhearted, open wide prison doors, hallelujah. His name is Jesus. He's the head. He's my head. I am not a chook running around with no head. I am not part of that. I'm part of a body that knows where it's going, amen that knows what's going on. I'm not part of a headless chook. Hallelujah, that's a horrible thing. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us when you believe? See, I don't know about you, but you see, the power. Everybody say the power. The power of God. The power of God is amazing. See, see, I, 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 I don't, there's a lot of things I don't understand. But as a mere man, I, I, I underestimate in my thinking, but praise God, Jesus is my head now. And he wants to download things. And, and he says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The power of God, God, I believe, wants to administer that power again into the church. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. It's the power of the anointing. Everybody say anointing. It's, it's the power as, as you lift up your hands and begin to worship and something all of a sudden comes over you. It's not a matter of carrying around like a bunch of... I've seen people in churches acting like a chook with his head chopped off and just carrying on stupid and no reality in it, just wanting to, I don't know what, but friend, I want to tell you, I believe that God is about to gather his church together and do something dynamic and start to fill us with the power and start to allow that anointing to come. You see, when that power hits you, it will change you. That power a couple of weeks ago hit Pat a few weeks ago and healed her back. Is that correct, Pat? It healed her back. Charlotte, she got hit by the power of God when Tom prayed, laid hands on her. And fear left her, and she found freedom to witness and pray for others. She grabbed Nancy at the back of the hall and prayed for her. You see, but that doesn't mean that you won't get attacked again. It doesn't mean that the enemy won't try to put that fear back on you again. What it means is you've got to fight. You've got to know who you are. You've got to, you've got to speak to it. I want to tell you there's a fight coming on in Jesus' name. Power is not just a feeling, it's a demonstration. 
John Cannon spoke of the power that hid his son. The son that, that has had arthritis and goodness knows what in his hands. And somebody, I'm not too sure who prayed for him, but somebody prayed for him. And, and he got hit by the power of God. Friend, can I say this? You all and me, we need to get hit again by the power of God. We need to get hit by the power of God. And John said to me, he said his son kept coming up to him and saying, Dad, I don't know, I, I, I'm looking for the pain, but I can't get it. Can't find it. Because God touched him, amen. Alan at the conference the other week, four or th- three or four guys, what it was, got touched by the power of God, got healed in Jesus' name, amen. John also spoke about his grandson. The doctors had wiped him out, but God never wiped him out, amen. God touched him and we're still believing for him, and that God will totally restore him. I know to- John's doing that. We, the church, need to know that Satan was and is defeated by our substitute, Jesus the Christ. We need to know Satan's defeat is eternal and permanent. Say those two words, eternal and permanent. You see, the victory over Satan that Jesus brought was transferred into my account. Just like as if I gave somebody a a, a thousand dollars and put it into your account, you can draw on that. The victory that Jesus wrought over Satan, he put it in my account. He put it in your account to draw upon. And you can start to speak to that thing. You can start to speak to that situation. And we speak to that tumor in Jesus' name. We speak to that cursed thing. And we speak to it and tell it in Jesus' name, it's got to dry up. It's got to dry up in Jesus' name. It's got to. It must. It has to. Because you see, Jesus put into your account everything that he'd done, and you can draw upon it. You can have faith in God's word. Hallelujah. Live, live, live in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Put it into my account. But you see, if I don't draw upon it, nothing much happens. But you see, I start to draw upon it. I start to draw upon the anointing. This morning, while we're worshiping, while we're singing, when, when, you can be singing, that, or, or you could be drawing. <laughs> you be drawing upon the power, drawing upon the anointing, just like a massive tree. As its roots go down, it draws from the, from the substance. It draws energy. It draws strength. And, oh, I can feel it happening right now. <laughs> See, you start to draw upon the power of God. You draw upon the anointing of God. You draw upon the victory of Christ. You draw upon the healing power. You draw upon the forgiving power. You draw upon the mighty blood of Jesus Christ. You draw upon it. You pull it down over your life. Amen. I don't want to do that. Give me a verse. (laughs) That victory over Satan was transferred into my account to draw upon. I don't understand what happened. We We can assume some things that Jesus had to die because of man's failure. If, if it was you or me, we would have just got the rubber out and, 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 and <laughs> pull that, that little chapter out where he failed and start again. But that's not how God works. He deals with the problem. He's dealt with the problem, amen. Now he's given you and me the victory. He dealt with it. And somehow or other... When Jesus paid that price and carried it and took it upon himself and, 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 and did all that sort of stuff, which Jack spoke so wonderfully about at communion this morning, when, when that happened there, something happened in the realm of the Spirit. And I don't understand whether there's a, whether there's a supreme court or something like that in the universe, but whoever it was, they were totally satisfied with the redemptive work of the cross of Calvary. 
and they declared, listen to this, they declared Jesus master over Satan. Master over Satan and his works. Fully, totally finished, defeated. Satan recognizes that that name which is above every name. See, Jesus didn't hand over his power to the church in a lesser form. It's not a 1.5 battery. He just didn't say, I'll give him a little bit down there. I'll just give Tom just a little bit so he can just get by. I'll just give Tamil a little bit, just a little bit so she can just make it into heaven. Just make it and scratch and crawl. And get down. No, you're going to go in with power. You're going to get in with power. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> go. Just didn't give us a, a, the little 1.5. He gave us a, the whole shebang. Romans 8.11 says, If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he, will, he who dwells in you will quicken, make alive your mortal body. I need to be quickened. Anybody else here need to be quickened? Come on, give me a wave if you need to be quickened. Come on. Come on, tell God, I need to be quickened this morning. I need a, a dose of the ghost. I, I, oh, yeah, amen. I need a dose of the ghost. Amen. Come on, give me a... You don't, don't, just, I, come on, I need a dose of the ghost. I am hungry for a move of the Spirit. I need a dose of the Holy Ghost. I need a fresh and filling hallelujah. I need a touch from the mighty power of God. It's not just a game. It's a reality. Quicken your mortal body. I need to be quickened. I need to be drenched. In other words, I need an encounter with the Lord that will totally transform my life. Anybody want to be transformed? So rise up, you people of power. Turn to somebody and say, you're a person of power. Rise up, you people of power. Rise up, you mighty warriors. Rise up, you people of power. Take your place, amen. You're a man, demon destroyers, I mean. Ooh, you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. You believe that today? Rise up, you people of power, and take your place. We're not just... A display cabinet. Take your place as a warrior. Take your place as a as a worshiper. Take your place as a prayer. Take your place as a man or a woman of God of the Word of God. Dare the impossible. Dare the impossible. Amen. Dare the impossible. His name can't fail you. Can't fail you. You are a victor. Jesus made you one. Jesus made you a victor. You are what the Word says you are. I often say to people as a bit of a joke when they, I say, I don't care what other people say about you, I think you're all right. And I realize that's not very flattering because people go away thinking other people are talking bad about me. You are what the Word of God says you are. It seems like a hundred years ago now. But when we first started Christian Outreach Center, we had a, a slogan or a saying, have a go, you never know, it might work. And that's all we did was have a go. We came to the Sunshine Coast to have a go had no ability, hadn't been to Bible school, had no, no, no real, what do you call it? 
training. I was at children's church. Nancy and I were children's church pastors. I'll train you, I guess. <laughs> we had no training, no nothing like that, no credentials, nothing under our name. I had a BA, born again. <laughs> Never know, it might work. We came down here not knowing, but it worked. Hallelujah. Come on, have a go. Have a go. You never know, it might work. You rise up and start believing for something. Dare to believe. Dare to believe. Dare to believe for the impossible. Dare to believe that change. Some ch there's going to come change over the Sunshine Coast. Dare to believe for a move of the Spirit. Dare to believe that God is on the throne. Dare to believe that He is your head and you're part of the body. Dare to believe that you are more than a conqueror. Dare to believe that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Dare to believe that nothing is too hard and nothing is impossible to those who believe. Dare to believe. Amen. Friend, can I encourage you? Anybody here need a kick start? <laughs> Nobody? I need a kick start. I got a kick start this morning when I came in and began to worship. Felt the power of God come in. Felt the anointing come in. Felt the Holy Ghost say, it's okay. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. Church, come on, dare to believe. Dare to respond to God. Dare to, to lift up your heart again. Dare. We were, I think, at the prayer meeting this morning, we are talking about Aaron's rod. And, and every part of it looked dead. It might, that might be the way the world looks at the church today, but Aaron's rod, when it touched the anointing, buttered. I don't care how dead you feel. If the anointing touches you, you'll bud again. <laughs> I'm budding again, amen. I'm bursting out all over, hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come on, lift up your hearts, lift up your hands. Come on, speak in the Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to give you praise, my God. I want to give you thanks. I want to just give my heart afresh to you, Jesus. I want to give my life afresh to you, Jesus. I just want to give myself afresh. I want to give myself afresh. God, I want, to, I want your purpose. I want your plan. I want everything that you have for my life, Father. I'm my hand, I'm in your hands, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You're going to order our lives. God, as we commit ourselves to you. Come on, this morning you might be here and, and I don't know where you stand with God, but you might just need that touch. You might be here today and you need a kick start. You know that, that, that somehow or other you've, you, you, you've sort of slackened off or whatever it might be. But, oh, friend, you might just say, I need a kick start again. I just want to come again. I, I want that refreshing. I, I want that mantle. I want the anointing to, to touch me again. Paul was on the road to Damascus, and he got hit by the power of God. Changed his life forever. Changed, I want to tell you, friend, one touch from God, one touch from the Spirit of God can change your whole destiny, can change your life forever. This could be that very moment. This could be that very hour. This could be that day that, that your whole life could be totally transformed. Hallelujah. If you're willing to say, God, I need a kick start this morning. I just need to come afresh. Lay some stuff aside. Get rid of some junk. Get some wrong thinking out of my mind and start to think right again. You like that this morning? Come. Just come. Just come. Let the Spirit of God touch you. Just put a little bit of... Music going on the outside, whatever is going there. Just come, come over, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, different ones. You can come. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Sign of commitment. It's the time of saying, I want to take responsibility. I, I want the power of God to come into my life. I want the anointing to touch me afresh. I want a fresh touch, a fresh touch. 
of the Spirit of God. I want a fresh anointing. I want to know. I want to know. I don't want to be led like, like blind people. Today, there's a lot of people being led by blind people. Led by this and led by that. But friend, don't just get led. Good to see Rosie here. Rosie was here in our church some time ago and she's heading to Darwin and she bought a bomb car and the, the bomb went off. <laughs> and we, the church gave her a couple of thousand dollars and got her going again. And here she is in church this morning. Hallelujah. Good on you, Rosie. Come on, folks. Get a fresh touch. Get a fresh touch. Get a fresh mantle. Get a fresh anointing. Let something fresh come over you. Let the power of God touch you. Let the anointings wash over you afresh. Come out with me, Tom. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray together in Jesus' name.